What's up, guys? Doug Polk here, and welcome back to today's podcast. Uh, today, we are joined by someone that has not been in the public eye for some time, Garrett Adelstein. I always say Adelstein or Adelstein. Do I get yeah, it wrong? I almost it wrong everyone wrong. always says it wrong, but it doesn't bother me. But it's okay. Adelstein. Like Stein. Stein, like I'm doing just fine. Yeah. Okay, Stein, like you're doing fine. All right, man. Well, yeah. welcome to the podcast. Thank you for coming on here. And I just wanted to say, before we get rolling, uh, that we we really appreciate you kind of showing up in the public sphere and being willing to discuss topics that I know are, um, you know, have had a large impact on your life over the course of the last six months. And you're you're very specific with when you choose to come forward and talk. You've always been like that, not not just since this. That's always kind of been sort of the way that you do things. And uh, uh, I know that a lot of some time has passed here. And and uh, thank you for for coming on to the show. Yeah, for sure. You know, I think uh, when all of this happened, uh, you know, once I kind of had some time to reflect in the in the weeks after, uh, I think I realized I was dealing with quite a lot of PTSD from uh, the backlash, and uh, it's made me kind of very shy to to be in the public eye. Um, and you know, I'd be lying to you if I told you I wasn't very nervous <laughs> about this. Yeah. You know, I I really kind of struggle with uh, not being liked or you know, anyone sort of hurling criticism at me, including even strangers on the internet. So that's, that's kind of mostly why I shied away, but, um, I, I know this is important. So, yeah, I mean, I, I personally can't imagine being in something on the internet, so I, I'd, I'd have to imagine what it's like, but it seems yeah. bad. Yeah. <laughs> if you were, if, bad. if you were like a public figure like me, man, you'd get it, but, okay. but I appreciate you trying to find some empathy there. <laughs> goals, goals. All right. So uh, let's just start off with a couple of things, uh, just light topics before we get into the topics today. We're going to be talking about basically everything that I think people want, want to hear you say. But before we get into those topics, I want to just kind of kind of start off here with what was your inspiration for, for deciding to come forward and want to actually do a conversation and have a podcast about this stuff? Because like I kind of said earlier, obviously you pick your words very carefully. You kind of choose your 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 appearances. And uh, it's been, I think, something like half a year now since since the whole thing, the, right. the eight, seven, Jack four thing happened. So why now? Like, why why is now the time to, to come forward and speak? Yeah, you know, I don't, I don't totally know. The I wish I could tell you there was some master plan to these sort of things, but the reality is, is like over the last six months, like again, I was like sort of too phobic to to speak out. I didn't want to deal with the inevitable backlash by some percentage of people. Um, but you know, if I have to pick like one reason, yeah, admittedly, you know, Airball's interview with you, um, really struck a nerve, um, with me, you know, uh, as you know, Doug, your platform is extremely powerful. Um, and it's one thing if he goes on, you know, minor podcasts and mumbles here or there, it's, it's another thing entirely for him to come on the biggest podcast in poker by far, uh, and just spew like a series of lies, half truths, exaggerations, uh, et cetera, throughout. Um, I don't, <laughs> I don't think that's right. I don't think that someone who's been in the same room with me just a few times, uh, has the right to sort of speak on who I am as a person, how I conduct my business, et cetera. And I think at a certain point, uh, the time comes where, where you have to be able to, to, to speak your own truth on, you, you know, who you are as a person, but, but namely in what we're talking more specifically, sort of how I conduct, um, you know, my business. Right. That, that, that makes sense. It, it's tough weighing when you want to weigh in, because if you, if you just punch back every time someone comes after you, then you're just doing that endlessly. Right. So you, you do kind of have to pick your spots. And, um, we, we had airball on last week. Uh, it, it was, it was definitely an aggressive interview. He went after, uh, you know, a, a few different people. And, uh, the, the thing is, you know, when you see that it, it does make you want to step up and, and, and say something to, kind of defend yourself so um, yeah that, for sure I, I think that the point you're making there is like an important one you know like uh there's so many different people uh that like you know have uh, so many people that have never even met me you know who like it seemed like dedicated their lives on on social media or whatever to to talking about who i was and <laughs> you know uh and you know it's it's a tricky spot because if i respond to that i'm just like increasing their exposure 100x you know and the vast majority of the time, these people like that's like exactly what they want. You know, they may not even believe or care about what they're saying about me. They really just like want exposure, you know, and uh, I think that really kind of hits at the heart of, of 
Nick Airball and and sort of how he's conducted himself, like as it relates to me from the, the get go, you know, from from the very beginning, uh, you know, my first interaction meeting this guy was just like, uh, you know, him coming up to me, like talking about what a huge fan he was, etc. Then we play in a game together, he gets in at the end, and he just immediately resorts to the same tactic he used in, in you know, the few appearances we had together, where he just literally talks shit to me the whole time. And like, I know what he's doing in the moment, you know, I know he's desperately just like trying to build a, a name for himself, desperately trying to figure out how to get a seat in a future game. But like, I mean, where's the line? You know, where, where's the line? Like when you're just sitting there talking shit to someone, I, I just didn't appreciate that, you know? Um, and then, you know, to take it a step further, then, you know, he goes on, you know, one of Joey's, I think Twitch streams or something like that. And he's just sitting there talking shit about me. This guy I've never, like, I, I barely know, you know, played a couple of times with him, like about how he's like, when he's finished with me, like I'm going to be homeless. Like he doesn't want my wife and I to like have a house. Like, it's just like, it's just really intense stuff, man. And uh, like, I know um, the politics of high stakes live poker is cutthroat. You know, I, I'm, I'm in there. Uh, but man, that's just some shit like I never have, you know, never would do. And it's been saddening to me to see like, um, to see that reception, I think. I think especially like since your interview, it's sad to see that we have like a guy who just shows up out of nowhere. Like nobody knows where he comes from. All of a sudden he just has like, like this infinite amount of money, you know, saying like, this is all my money. I'll challenge anyone to heads up. Like you have to play with all your own money. Uh, and then just like spewing a bunch of bullshit about, about me and my life, uh, you, you know, for, for an hour and a half straight. It's just, uh, you know, I, it, it's complicated, Doug, because um, I really don't want most of what we discussed today to be about airball. I really want to be above that. I really don't want to roll in the mud with this piece of shit, you know? Um, but also at the same time, I, I think at least some time needs to sort of be given to, to clarifying, you know, like uh, just the, many of the, the untruths he, he spoke of me. Yeah, I think also when, when someone really goes after you, then in, in that sort of way, um, defend, defending yourself, it, it makes sense to do both strategically and, and just sort of just morally, um, yep. you know, to, to, to defend yourself. So uh, we're going to do a Nick Airball segment, but I, I have this planned out a little bit differently. I want to kind of do this a little a little chronologically, if you will. Sure. We'll, we'll a couple, couple of things that, to go through first. So it's your show, man. Let's do it. <laughs> all right, let's do it. I, I think uh, let's actually just briefly last, last half a year or so. You've not been playing poker. Uh, I know you're very close to becoming a father as well. Uh, I hope everything's going well with that, by the way. How, how many weeks out are you at this point? Yeah, everything's been great. You know, my wife had a, a really rough first trimester, and so we were pretty nervous about if this was going to go on for 40 weeks, but she's just been in cruise control. So she's almost awesome. at thir 38 weeks now. Mom and baby are, are both super happy, and it's just awesome. uh, it, it's been a very rewarding time. Dude, yeah. it was it's insane being in there, by the way. Like it's insane. You're in there and you're just like moral support, right? Because what are you gonna do? Like, she's the star, and then you just like you're grabbing a leg and you're just like, I'm here for the team. Like, let's. And then and then one moment, you know, next moment your dad is crazy. It's honestly yeah. it's real. It's like you're not even there. I, I, dude, I, crazy. I, I can't. I can't wait. And like you know, like everything. Like my wife and I both very much live by like the philosophy of doing the work, you know. And so she's terrified of childbirth, honestly. But like. You know, I was like, let's just do the work. And so we've gone through two different, very comprehensive birthing classes. And so the point is, is like, I'm, I'm excited. You got your, like, you got your peanut, you got your peanut ball. We got it. We got the nice. peanut ball. All right. We, nice. We got, we got the massage techniques, like okay. all of it. But like, my point is like, once, once we head to the hospital, like I know it's, it's go time. And although I'm doing 1% of the job, like. I definitely want to do everything I can to make sure I kill it with that 1%, you know? Awesome. Well, I, I hope everything goes well and uh, you're on the home stretch there. So in, enjoy the moments, but uh, let's, let's change gears pretty significantly here. Are you we sure? We, maybe I, we should keep talking I mean, about that. Do you want to keep talking about it? Hey, I mean, we got some time here. What do you want it to might do? might be a little easier for me, but no, no, carry on. <laughs> I, I, by all means. I uh, know. But so when we, when we first t talked about potentially doing this interview, it became very clear that we were going to have to talk about the, what happened on the hustler with the Jack forehand. Uh, I think that that just needs to sort of have a wrap up at least with your perspective, because 
we've seen Robbie's perspective. Obviously, she's been out at the public eye, I would say, the whole the whole time, more or less. Uh, Hustler concluded their investigation found no wrong, wrongdoing, but we didn't really get kind of your side of what happened. And, and there are a couple of questions here specifically that I want to ask you that I think people on the show would feel like if I didn't, that uh, this wasn't, you know, th I need to ask these questions essentially. But the first here is, so what's your, what are your final thoughts? Do you think that Robbie cheated you in this hand or not? I don't think anyone really cares about that, do they? <laughs> I, 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 uh, I think they might. I think they might, Garrett. I think that there are at least a couple guys in the chat. I'm just, I'm just messing around. Yeah, I mean, obviously, like I haven't, you know, spoken of this. Um, again, you know, uh, no matter what I say, like there's going to just be a ton of backlash, you know, to answering this question. Um, but, but yeah, it's, it's obviously time to do that. Uh, but yeah, I mean, in, in essence, I stand completely by the, the statement I made on two plus two. I think it's extremely likely that I was cheated in that poker hand, you know, simple as that. And I think everything that came out uh, in the days and weeks thereafter, all of the many sort of coincidences, uh, they've only sort of further solidified that belief. Okay, that's that's a, a fair stance. I, I assume that would be your answer. Um, you, you did post a, a lot of different aspects of the hands on two plus two um, as as to why you thought that way. And and during it, I also can say, you know, you, you were, we were talking back and forth and you were trying to, you know, look at all the evidence and weigh things out and, and try to understand um, exactly exactly what happened. But um, so let me add one. Let me add one thing to that, that that I think I'd like to say, too. You know, it, it's not a big thing. But again, it's just like since I already have a platform to speak on these things, you know, I think it's been curious to watch Robbie go back on streams. Um, her play. It's just like night and day. It's like a completely different person in these streams. Like for anyone who's, you know, watched any any of these hands that she's played on stream now, she plays, she plays just like any other like, uh, you know, poor playing recreational player. Very weak, very tight, very scared. Uh, the exact opposite of someone who just like, you know, grabs their balls and goes, "I'm calling you down with Jack Four on ten, ten, uh, nine, whatever." You know, like it's. It, it, it's just like, uh, it, to me, it, it's just ridiculous. You know, she's, I mean, she got a lot of balls, just like she always did. She went out, you know, knowing, uh, you know, like what really went down and spoke over and over and over again. Uh, you know, she, she has a lot of sort of self-belief in, in what she's trying to do here, uh, including, you know, going back on stream. Um, and, uh, you know, I think another thing like I want to say about this is I'm well aware you know, I got a lot of people on sort of Team Robbie, if we want to call it, you know, in, in this situation. Uh, you know, they may be even more likely to tune in than the next person, you know, just so they can hear me on screen and yell and scream and and whatever. And, and I just want to say like irrelevant of like what, how they may feel about me or sort of make a judgment about who I am as a person or whatever based on, on this opinion. I, I, like, I, it's all love for me, like on the other end, like I really do understand and respect people that feel very differently, you know, uh, about this. You know, I think probably the most outspoken critic time and time again throughout this was Daniel Negreanu against me. And, and Doug, every time I listen to him, I go, what you're saying is reasonable, man. Like, like I, I hear you, you know? And so I, I really do, you know, see the other side. Um, and, you know, I, I think that's obviously why this controversy is so explosive is because, you know, you have two very different camps that really kind of feel very strongly uh, uh, about the topic. You know, it almost became an issue like uh, like politics or something where people dug their their teeth in, you know, they, they put their stick into the ground and then they're like, this is my team and everyone else is other, you know? And it's just, uh, yeah, it, it, it's, been, it's been rough, you know, in, in that way because, man, usually I live my life trying to, trying to be in the middle, trying to, you know, like, kind of point out that these people who live on the extremes politically or otherwise, like they're not getting it. Like you need to be able to hear the other side, but in this situation, like obviously like, you know, my, my opinion is one that's going to um, upset some people. It, it actually is very much like politics, especially because of just how goddamn long it went on for like but, the first yeah. couple of days, you're like, all right, yes and no. And then there were some people in the middle, but then by week four, it was still just everywhere all the time. And there were updates and it was a saga and some people were doing YouTube videos about it. I don't know who those people were at all personally, Yeah. Uh, but uh, there was all these updates, right? And so <laughs> people had to, if you were neutral, you eventually ended up in one camp or the other. What What do you think that essentially basically now that not with where we are today, 
what's the path forward look like in terms of how we you know, how we, we approach the Robbie situation, right? Because, and I've, I've said this publicly as well. I still think it is more likely that she cheated. I, I, a little less likely than I was at the absolute peak because there were a couple of factors that came into play that like no one's taking the bounty money and stuff like that. I still lean yeah. that she cheated, but what, what, what do we really do sort of as a poker community, right? Because just because someone probably cheated, what do you really do about that when they, they when they want to play poker and they want to keep playing poker? And, and Robbie's been playing on streams. Like she came out to our room and she played. Sure. She's played at the bike. She's playing other places. What 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 does the community do kind of moving forward given what happened? Yeah, you know, tough questions. You know, one other thought I just had real quick was like, you know, I keep I keep watching the Robbie streams or hearing about them and like I keep waiting for that turn min raise. You know, like that turn min raise was such an integral part of her poker game, you know, in, in her Osler Casino live. Oh, and by the way, could, coincidentally, she just happened to have the best hand every time and just, just, you know, just haven't seen it since. But, but anyway, to, to answer your, um, your more, way more, uh, relevant question here. Yeah. You know, I don't, I don't think there's an easy answer to that, you know, and obviously I saw you take, you know, some heat for, for letting Robbie play on your stream, you know, obviously like, uh, you know, Poker Go gave her an award and she gave a speech for the hand, which is. But I mean, that, that that was a fan vote, though. So they don't choose yeah, yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. That's pure yeah, fan vote. I, yeah, yeah. No, and I'm glad you clarified that. In no way uh, am I saying like Poker Go was in the wrong in, in, in that okay. scenario. Um, but like the shit is surreal. I think we can say that. The shit is yeah. definitely surreal. You know, if you're if you're sort of think as I do and you think it's extremely like as she cheated and she's up there like giving an award and a speech it's you know it's crazy but you know I don't envy your position in that way in terms of like well what do you do as a business you know uh have her on or not I, I don't have any answers for that but what I can say uh and, and you know I texted you about this you know privately when you were asking if I'd be willing to come on and play with her is like like we're good man like I don't I don't fault you for having her on you know when you know, when live at the bike did the same, I, I told them the same, you know, everyone's, everyone's kind of just like doing what's in their best interest. And sure. I think it's, I think it's a lot too much for me to expect like anyone, you know, to kind of take you out of it, to be like, well, I personally think she probably cheated, you know, but like, I'm going to fight the good fight for Garrett, like, and, and not let her, you know, play, you know, but with all of that said, Doug, like, you know, I'm not like... <laughs> I'm not too excited like about like in this interview and really like moving forward in my life, giving like Robbie much of a platform, you know, like she's had her 15 minutes, like, you know, I don't care. Like anyone who actually watches her play poker, like, I think, you know, it's, it, you can all agree, like it's not an interesting brand of poker, you know, and that's, that's what people tune in, you know, for, for streams for, or at least some of the viewers, you know? Um, I mean, if she's just, if she's stirring up controversy in your games and you're in it for the reality TV, sure. Sure. But, you know, I think sort of the other elephant in the room uh, that, that I've yet to address that I, I think, uh, you know, I think probably everyone wants to know. Uh, and I think it's related to your last question is, well, what should be done, you know, about the money at this point? Right. That's, um, where, that's where this is driving. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think like I can just answer flat out like, no, no, I will not be refunding Robbie any money, period, flat out. Uh, that's not going to change. That has never changed. Um Again, I am extremely confident I was cheated in this hand. And so, you know, I, I express sort of empathy towards those who, who very much are Team Robbie. What I would ask them to do just for a second is ask themselves if they were extremely confident they were cheated in a hand by a con artist, what would they do? What would they do? Would they, would they give the money back anyway? Um, and, and that's sort of, you know, really where I stand in that, on that. I think I want to elaborate maybe a bit further um, in terms of was this the best business decision <laughs> for me? You know, there's there's a lot that's been said and, and, you know, you can imagine a lot of soul searching myself in terms of like, you know, did I handle this whole thing well? You know, and there were so many different decision points throughout it, you know, and I'm someone and I think probably everyone listening in, you know, wants to feel this way. Someone who really makes great decisions in the most pivotal moments of their life, you know? Uh, and I think that that's been tough on me because uh, I, I think it's very unclear, you know, even just thinking this over, you know, in my own head, you know, did I make, did I make good decisions, you know, both out of principle as well as, you know, for my business, you know, and I think to sort of address the business aspect of it, you know, 
there's it, probably not. I, I think is I think that's that's where I would start is is probably not. You know, I think you know I, I I'm gonna try to like keep it together. <laughs> it's okay, man. It's all right. Take your time. Yeah, yeah. I'm not um, going anywhere. I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I don't think the viewers are either. So if you need the a last second, thing that's we all, need is like it's a, all good. A clip of me crying on your podcast. I, I, so hopefully I, we don't. I, hopefully I, it gets nowhere close dude, to that. <laughs> this has been insane. The whole thing has been insane. It has been a highly emotional ride. You've gotten put through the ringer. Um, you know, I, I, I know I, I personally think you probably could have handled it a little bit differently and it would have been better. Um, but it was a high pressure spot and you, you, you tried to do what you thought was the right thing. I mean, sure. I think as a, as a business, almost certainly this taking the money is actually financially a lot worse for you than not taking the money. For pretty sure. cool. So let me, pretty, let me, go yeah, let it. me elaborate on that. Like just a bit, um, which is like, um, you know, uh, I, so there, there's a, there's, this is multifaceted in a bunch of ways. Let's start by the initial reaction the day of from the viewing audience. When they see the hand, everyone loses their shit and they're just like, Oh my God, she cheated. Oh my God. Crazy. You know, then right. Robbie gives the money back. Rip loses his mind. Right. And then the narrative amongst some percentage of people totally shifted you know, to, to all sorts of fucked up stuff, you know, like rich white male steals money from poor, innocent, like girl, you know, like, uh, and, <laughs> and in, in the hours and days, you know, thereafter, um, you know, I didn't, I didn't do anything to, to sort of change their mind, you know, uh, and, you know, so, so I think the next question is, well, what could have been done? What, what do you do? You know, and, you know, one thing that's been brought up to me, <laughs> like every sort of option a million times is, is sort of, you know, the process of arbitration, give it to some neutral third party that, you know, both me and team Robbie or whatever can agree upon uh, and let them decide, you know? Um, and, you know, I think in retrospect, that would have been the better business decision uh, at the time. But again, like my mindset is like, why would I do that? Like, why would I do that when like, I'm extremely confident I was cheated in this poker hand. Um, and, but to be clear, that would have uh, almost certainly been the better business decision. Now, how do I feel about that out of principle? Not great, you know, not great, as I said. And, and I think just to add one more sort of I guess, point to this, you know, I've heard a lot of people on the internet just be like, uh, you know, oh, like Garrett could have made another million or 10 million or whatever, whatever numbers people pull out of their head, like in the last six months, if he just would have did that, like that really misses the point. Like that really misses the point, both out of principle, but also kind of where I'm at in my life, you know, yeah. and where I'm at in my life is I think very often regularly about just leaving the game always well before jack four you know uh yeah. and so this idea that like i'm just sitting at home like sadly crying myself to sleep because like i'm not playing in hcl games i i mean i wouldn't even know where to start with like how far off the mark that is you know and you know even if i do come back to playing some poker like you know my relationship with the game uh it, is such that you know i'm I'm very, I guess, unsure in terms of what that frequency would look like, but pretty likely it, it would be certainly less than I was playing before. Um, go ahead. So I, I also feel like just to talk about the arbitration thing for a second, I feel like sure. if you had just picked a few people and you said, look, every ounce of me thinks she cheated. I know she cheated, but the optics of, of me deciding slash the responsibility of that, like, I just yeah. don't want that on me. So yeah. I'm letting you know, I, 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 and I'm willing to talk about why, but I, I believe she, and then you just gave it to a panel of like three people and yeah. said, you guys figure it out. I will abide by the ruling. I don't want to be responsible here. And then, and then I think you, you, you wouldn't have been the target like this because yeah, I, I do think, I do think that because it is very likely that you were cheated, you tried to do what was principled, which was you, you view a cheater has your money, right? And we don't know that for sure. There's a lot of there's a lot of pitfalls here. I'm trying to to avoid, but, we don't, yeah. but basically, you were trying to do what you believed was to be the right thing, but you took on so much responsibility there, and it, it really kind of made you a, a target, and it made you sort of the the person against her, right? Whereas you could have just sort of been like the guy it happened to. You became like the enemy of her in a way. At least that's the way it seemed like it played out. 
Uh, I, yeah, I, I agree with all of that. You know, uh, I think this kind of just, you know, learning how to add to that is just going back to what I said before. It's like, you know, you, you want to make great decisions in really important moments in your life. And, uh, and, you know, I'm definitely, uh, you know, I guess like the idea that, you know, I, I didn't do that. And, uh, that sucks, man. That shit, that shit hurts. Yeah, it's, it's tough, but I, I think, I think it's good, good that you see that. And, um, you know, there's always, always room to, to learn in life. And, and I, I was cheated one time. I remember being so upset about it. And, and when you realize it happened and, and it, it's difficult to, to kind of see clearly, but, um, yeah, I think I that's all. Awesome. I think right. just like that, I just want to say one other thing. Like it's, it's just, it's just hot. You know, it's just, I'm just, you know, I'm just kind of like, I don't know. Like, I know, I know, like, I'm not really going to be converting anyone here in this interview again, like everyone's picked their side and, and, you know, that's, that's where they're going to live forever. But it's hard, man. It's hard when just every bone in your body deeply believes in something. And then to, to just give that level of money to someone who, despite what they say, almost certainly needs the money <laughs> um, and, and every single thing about them and their life and their story is somewhere between wildly fabricated and untrue it's 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 really hard to to you know give a, a third party that you know it's really hard not to be worried about collusion and those people yeah. being paid off to make certain decisions and you know there i i wish i could say honestly like oh arbitration is an easy easy answer but you know i don't want to get into that like you know any much more but like that resolution also did have issues but like let, let me just state very clearly, like, if my goal was just to make the best business decision between what I did and arbitration, what would have been the better choice? There's, I think there's no way I could say uh, anything but arbitration. Okay, cool. We can, we can move on because we have, we have a lot of stuff to, talk, to cover here today. Um, so just changing gears a little bit, let's, let's just talk about the hustler stream dynamics. Uh, obviously we've heard a lot about hustler in the last you know, couple of weeks, uh, about the way that the show worked and, and kind of your role there. Can you maybe give us a little backstory on kind of, you know, once the hustler got running, once it split off from the bike, your involvement early on, kind of what was your relationship like with people at hustler? Sure. Let's go back a little bit then. Uh, I think, uh, you sure. know, Ryan used to be, uh, the game runner and, uh, my or minority owner of live at the bike. Um, and you know he tried for a while back as you know early as 2016 to to get me out to play on the show regularly uh it was just not something i was really interested in you know and uh as sort of i saw the writing on the wall in terms of public games starting to disappear and everything starting to go private uh that was another time in my life where man i had one 0.99 feet out the door and ready to ready to move on to the next thing you know that's that's uh, when they pull you back in though i've been there that's when you, you've <laughs> been there. yeah obviously you can relate more to anyone you're you're like playing on stream alone like 30 hours a week you know like it's wild from, from someone who's like i'm done <laughs> you know but, yeah but anyway so you you obviously get it um and i i realized like you know uh especially after playing on the stream a couple there was a real opportunity here you know the reception i got etc made me realize like hey like if i can become this very popular player that the fans like vocally speak out on wanting to watch it doesn't even really matter what else is going on in terms of the politics of the stream and this and that in the end they're trying to run a business and what drives that business is people wanting to watch their stream you know and so very early on, uh, you know, I realized that Ryan realized that and, and our relationship was was quite strong, you know, right off the bat. Um, and so, you know, after a pretty short period of time, the process game became pretty collaborative and the process at Live at the Bike was the exact same as it was at Hustler. Ryan would work very hard to uh, build a lineup. Uh, and obviously the base of that lineup always needs to be recreational players. Without recreational players, there's not a game, you know, and he would he would work his hardest to get as many recreational players in that game as well. You know, eventually he would send me a tentative lineup for that game. We would discuss it uh, and like basically come to a mutual agreement on on what that looked like. You know, that was, that was um, at the bike you're saying right before Hustler. That was at the bike. It's same, but it's exact same methodology at the Hustler. OK, okay. exact same. It, it didn't change at all. 
Um, so you you were actively involved in in curating the lineups then? Uh yes, yes. Okay. It was very much a collaborative process. Uh, to say that I controlled the lineups or that I forced Ryan to do anything misses the mark by by a mile. Okay, and and honestly, like anyone who even thinks that like doesn't know Ryan then, because Ryan is a very sharp, very savvy businessman who would never do anything that wasn't in his best interest. So in no world, like, are there lineups where, like, it comes together because it's what I want and not what he wants. Uh, and, and I think that point is really missed here because the reason why Ryan and I worked so well together is because our interests aligned almost always. Yes, there was a few exceptions. Yes, for whatever reason, Ryan wants his close friend Zio in the game. Not not interesting to me, you know. But in the vast majority of uh, of situations, like uh, Ryan and I's interests align, and and this, you know, what I've recently found out became a very sweet deal for Ryan because he could get what he wants, which is a lineup filled with with me, right? Bringing the eyeballs, maybe another pro who brings some eyeballs, such as Andy, and otherwise the game is filled with recreational players, right? So the game is far more sustainable long term. The recreational players are losing far less money, if at all, right? Uh, and he can go back to, to someone like Art, you know, to, to give an example of someone, you know, who's been a very outspoken critic and say, hey, man, I'd love to get you in there, <laughs> you know? But Garrett, Garrett, you know? But I, I think it really begs the question, well, it's now been six months after the fact and Art's still not playing in those games. You know, why, why is that, you know? And, and so... You know, the reality of the situation, I, I think, is pretty clear. Uh, Ryan and I were both doing what was best for our individual businesses, which, you know, those interests aligned. And, you know, in the meantime, you know, with, without me realizing it, he was throwing me under the bus, you know, to, to everyone. Because this, honestly, Doug, is like almost entirely news to me, you know, in terms of, you know, basically realizing like all of these conversations that, you know, he was having, you know, in the shadows sort of shitting on me, you know? Okay. I've said a couple sort of not great things about Ryan here. Uh, I, I want to say to, to be very fair, you know, uh, Ryan is the very best at what he does. You know, that, that, that's just the reality. The reason why the hustler stream is what it is. It's Ryan period. Like just entirely Ryan, like, the work he puts in all day, every day with the production, and most importantly, his very, very strong networking skills to put together the best games. That's why, that's why he has the stream he has. And, and that's why, you know, for a long time, I, uh, most of my action, you know, was on Hustler Casino. I also want to say that, like, Ryan and I, we butt heads occasionally over, like, minor things with lineups and whatever. But, like, by and large, we work together very well. And uh, I think anyone can see that um, my live stream business that I've been running in recent years uh, was greatly benefited from working with Ryan, greatly benefited from, uh, from playing on Hustler Casino Live, you know, and, and the many great games they put together. Um, and, and, you know, I, I would be shocked if, if Ryan said, you know, he didn't feel the same. I've, I've had good experiences working with Ryan. I've been out to to la several times i went back at the bike i went there for a week I, I came out you know last year um i've always talked with him he's always been someone we kind of bounce ideas back and forth and, and i have a lot of respect for for kind of the combo of how hard he works but also he really gets poker and so sure. so hustler really he, he had his experience kind of he, he, he trained trained at the bike right and then he got to take that and then bring that to hustler and kind of put together something that was kind of the exact vision that he had or at least more closely aligned to the vision that he had so totally. he had a, like a lot of on the job training with me in those early years you know like i'm not i'm not taking credit for the brilliant hard-working businessman that ryan is today but when i first playing on live at the bike uh he definitely like didn't totally get it you know and that's why we had you know like games like you know the one that fell apart where uh you know you came to play and then it you know it didn't end up happening in the game it like had six or seven great players in it you know uh, I, was, it, it, I enjoyed it. i had a good time i was happy yeah, i was there yeah it it like <laughs> it it definitely took time for him to evolve in terms of uh what what a what a great business owner uh you know he is now um you, you know with that stream but you know and i mean obviously like 
there's there's no love lost i think at this point i think it's pretty clear between myself and ryan between myself and nick but like you know we we need to call sort of a, a spade a spade in terms of uh him getting credit for, for for what he's done so we got we got to talk about the the who the forcing lineups thing because this has been yeah. talked about i think airball said this i think a couple of people said it as well there's there are arguments about who wasn't letting certain people play you kind of alluded to this already talking a little bit about it with people like art but were you forcing ryan to essentially put together lineups that you wanted or were you saying hey this guy's in or if, if things like of the nature of like you're only going to play if this guy's in or not in like you have to put this guy did you did you threaten or force him in some way and what what would you say i, I guess how that's fine let's just let's click off with that Okay. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's interesting to use the word forced because that's exactly the word airball uses with you in his interview. I forced Ryan to do this uh, again. You know, I, I may, on... I, I may have pulled that from somewhere. I'm not, I don't want to say where I pulled it from. <laughs> yeah. uh, I don't, you know, I, I touched on this a little bit, you know, uh, already, but like, again, that's just like a load of horse shit. You don't force Ryan Feldman to do anything like despite him not being like, you know, the world's tallest guy or something. The guys, the guys a machine, like he, he runs shit and like, you know, him and Nick have several, uh, businesses, you know, where, where they're, they're earning additional revenue and whatever, uh, within the poker industry. And it, it, it's just, the narrative is, is it's just ludicrous. You know, Ryan does what's best for Ryan always. And like, it worked out well because that was also best for me, you know, in, in many situations. And, and I think that, I think that just speaks to the fact, just like in general, like, we're playing high stakes poker here. These are seven figure annual businesses, some much more than that for, for the best of players. You know, like uh, I know there's like this romanticized notion of like, you know, people just hop on the stream and it's just like a bunch of good poker players just gambling it up and like, we'll see what happens, you know? But the reality is, is like, th there's just too much money involved in that. You know, th this is a business for everyone, you know? So I'm, I am no poker philanthropist. Like, and neither is Ryan and neither is, neither is anyone else, you know, who's, who's like trying to basically, you know, uh, earn a living as a, as a, either a professional poker player, host, even media member, et cetera. Were there, were there certain times at, on the stream where you said that you weren't going to play if you put certain people in, was that a thing that happened? It didn't play out like that. Here, okay. Here's how it played out. Right. It was very, very clear. So. When Hustler Casino Live started, it was mayhem, like behind the scenes between myself and HCL ownership and myself and um, the ownership and, um, you know, they, they've gone through ownership changes, you know, so like initial ownership change, whatever, but the ownership and employees of Live at the Bike. For those who don't know, uh, Wayne uh, runs uh, the, uh, he's the game runner. He, he builds the lineups for Live at the Bike. An incredibly like nice Wayne. guy. I like Wayne yeah, a lot too. Incredibly nice guy. Someone I've always worked really well with. And, and you know, that reminds me, that's another thing about like the, the air ball interview, you know, like what is he doing? Like throwing other people into this, like it's bad enough that he's just like, just slandering me all over the place. But now he's just making up shit, like literally just making up shit out of nowhere, saying stuff like I didn't trust Wayne. That's insane. Like, in a world where like, I didn't trust anyone. <laughs> like, uh, I always trusted Wayne. Like he always did what he said. He always told me the truth. He was always incredibly straightforward, you know? And it reminds me of another thing. Airball tried to like throw some other guy that I played heads up under the bus, you know? Well, now you have all these people on the internet trying to find this guy's name. He's misquotes and, and just throws out of nowhere. There's no way he could have ever have any idea how much I beat that guy for heads up. He doesn't give a fuck, man. He just says whatever he wants. He'll throw any shit against the wall, like hoping either A, like the the clickbait, the 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 sort of uh, salacious nature of it, like will will help him build his brand, and B, like to try to bring me down. And and to be fair about Airball, like I don't even think it's personal with him. Like I actually don't even think he cares. Like he is just fucking cutthroat, savvy businessman who's super super intelligent and calculated and has like figured Air, out nick nick airball that that yeah like we can agree to disagree about that but like and i, I kind of joking. I, oh, okay i think we saw that in the interview as well you know like he plays this fucking cartoon character on all the streams and then he comes on your show and it's like a totally different person why yeah, 
Why? Because he's really smart. He can play any fucking character he needs to play to like, as long as it meets his ends, you know? And so I think the question, like those watching like this and sort of deciding team airball, team Garrett, you know, as, as icky as that sounds is like, who are you going to trust? Like the guy who just came out like six months earlier, like had no money, like all of a sudden just playing in the biggest games in the world, clearly built a brand off of talking shit to me, goes on your podcast for the first time, doesn't say a word about his own life, right? Instead just talks about me for 90 minutes straight. Could you imagine? Like this is the first major podcast he did. Like, <laughs> and, and I know I'm going on a rant here. I'll, I'll finish here in a second, but it's like, say something about yourself. Say something about like your own life. Like I'm flattered, bro. Like I'm flattered I live like in your head rent free all day long, you know? But like, I don't know. At a certain point, it's like he, he has an audience now. Like he's so smart that he went from like not being able to get on the show just months ago to now being one of the stars, you know, like this guy's brilliant to be able to do that. You know, I, I don't know why he continues to feel like he needs to make up shit again about me to, to try to continue to build that brand, you know? And I was going to say, he's been around a few months. Like my, my career has been extremely public for 20 years and for the last six years, especially there's no more public poker player. You know, right. like he wants, he wants to throw all this stuff like about me, like whatever, like I'm literally like thousands of hours on stream. Like, like what, what seems more likely? Like the person that people have watched play on stream for thousands of hours or one 90 minute video of, of Nick trying to crush me, you know? Go ahead. All right. We got, we got a lot of stuff to jump in that Let, let's do the Nick airball segment. Now I feel like we actually kind of already started it. So, <laughs> so, so let's just, let's just kind of, kind of talk about this a little bit. By the way, I'm not going to roll in the mud. <laughs> yeah, I, I haven't yeah. done any sure. of that at all, right? Sure, sure, bud. Sure, <laughs> sure. It's all right. tough, man. It's so, so hard. I, I was going to – I had some ahead. HCL stuff prepared, but let, let's just focus on no, the no, air no, ball. No, 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 why, why no, 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 no. Why don't we, no, no. Why don't we go – We're going to get back to it. No, we're going to get back to it. I'll get us back, but we have a we have a full – So let's just start off with your history with Nick Airball because was what's the backstory – that led up to this point before we go into the specific things where he said this or that let, let's what where did you first meet airball like do you have any what, what's your passion Nick airball like yeah yeah it's, it's real simple like the very first time we played together he just starts talking shit to me after letting me know like before that like on the casino floor what a huge fan he is of mine you know then every time the cameras turned off he would again let me know like i'm his hero i'm such a huge fan blah 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 you know and he said all these things to you in his podcast as well you know and it's it, it just sucks. Like, again, just like him, just like playing this character and just like attacking me on stream, you know, it's, it's no fun, yeah, but, you know, but, but just, just to play devil's advocate on that for a moment. Sure. Right? Yeah, of course. So of course. like with Nick Airball, he was calling me a bitch just immediately. Like Doug, he's a bitch. I'm going to go down, fly on Texas yeah. and buy his fucking card. And he's fucking whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when I saw that, I was like, Oh, I see what we're doing. And so I was like, yeah, I'm a bitch. Come fucking get some dude right here. You know? And yeah, then like yeah. he shows and cause like he's, he's doing a bit like, yeah it's not it's not like that that's like who he really is right it, it's and we, you said he's brilliant and i'm not trying to say he's not a smart guy sure. but he's definitely a showman he understands the way that good tv is created and and he creates a persona that's that's he he's playing the heel right he's playing like i'm the right. bad guy like i'm gonna fuck you up like i'm gonna i'm gonna just stack you and laugh in your face like and and he it's actually i, I think it's good to have people that are doing that kind of stuff in poker because we have so many robots now garrett we got so many guys that show up of course and, they, yeah, and, yeah. and they're just no personality at all to have that is good but did you ever talk to him about maybe like hey why like i don't appreciate the on stream you're just like you're you're, you're treating me like this and then you're going too far like this isn't cool like, like this is over the line or, or 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 did you just did you say anything to him about this no, I mean, no, we never had that conversation. You know, I, I couldn't imagine it going anywhere. But your point is really well taken. You know, like these streams, like it's a combination of poker and and eyeballs, you know, and reality TV gets eyeballs and him barking gets eyeballs. And and, and again, I, no question, it's, it's a really good business strategy. I, I think sort of differing minds can um, kind of maybe agree to disagree if they review the tape of the things Airball used to do and say to me. Whether uh, whether it's fair game or, or whether it's just like in poor taste, you know. Um, yeah. Oh, but, I wasn't. But, I wasn't defending the specific things. I'm sure. just saying the overall the overall shtick. Like I, yeah. I, I, I mean, I, I can't, I can't say anything because he probably went over the line, frankly, yeah. the way that he talks. But I'm just yeah, like, it's, yeah. it's it, you know, it's it's whatever. But but even like I can sort of you know uh, you know agree on that. But but I think you're bringing up sort of like an interesting point here 
in terms of, you know, my tweet, you know, where I say like, you know, Nick Airball's a bad person or whatever. Fuck that guy. Um, yeah. You, you want to talk again about things like probably shouldn't do, you know, usually I'm better than the next guy at avoiding Twitter hands, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like saying some shit on the internet, but like, you know, I, I just, I just, I just didn't have it that day. You know, I think just like too much shit, like too much shit has been said about me. Too many people using me for their own clicks to advance their own narrative, you know, et cetera. And of course, you know, I don't like that, this guy, like, of course, like, you know, he did like all he could to build his brand while destroying mine, you know? Um, and, and so it, it, it came out that way, you know, but, uh, but yeah, I, I wish I didn't say that, you know, I, I wish, I could have been above that, you know? Um, well, it's, yeah. I mean, it's, it, it, dude, like you're a human being, honestly, yeah. you're a human being. If, 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 honestly, if you go on a big podcast and you talk shit about me for 90 minutes, there's an approximately 0% chance I'm not roasting your face in like two days on YouTube. Like, like I, I you know, like, and I, I, yeah. I, mean, I don't know if that's a flaw in me. I, I don't know, but like well, you're a human yeah. being. Well, I'm glad you saw it, but there's a difference though. To be clear, my tweet came before the podcast, you know? Right, but uh, sure, that's, that, that is true. And we should get into like some timeline stuff there sure. but uh, i i think the line with the insults just to kind of put a pin in the in whole insults thing is sure. if it's clearly part of the 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 whatever i think it's it's fine but i do think like once you go into like the personal level you're attacking like somebody's character who they are uh i think you kind of like pass this sort of line and so i think with your tweet when you said he's a bad person that really upset nick airball I, I i'm just sure, from yeah. the way the way he responded that clearly yeah. really upset him because and I, 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 I met Nick Arable like twice and he's been on my podcast once. Yeah. But I do feel like he's, he, he, it seems like you said this as well. He was probably someone that when he started playing poker, he's much younger. You were probably already playing high stakes. He's probably someone, oh, maybe one day I could play high stakes like Garrett, I assume at yeah. some point. So I feel like when you said bad person, like PC Garrett has died, you know, he's a bad poker yeah. player. He's even worse person. I do yeah. think that that really upset him when you yeah. said that. Yeah, yeah, I, I think that's fair. And, you know, like, um, yeah, I, I mean, yeah, I get it. Uh, I get it. I, I think it's fair, you know. Uh, <laughs> it's funny because, like, if if this sort of discussion is, like, maybe that was a little over the line to tweet that in the moment, um, I, I, I can get on board with that, you know. But then his behavior thereafter really makes me wonder, like, <laughs> well, I, I think I probably had that shit spot on, you know, and uh, – yeah, but you know, we we can kind of we can leave that part there, I guess. Like I, again, my hope is that I I at some point in this stop rolling in the mud, you know, this fucking. I I, I don't um, think, by the way, that it makes it wrong to tweet that if that's how you feel and you have reasons why you said that and and you think he's gone over the line and it's yeah. something that that's important to you, then you should speak your mind. And I think yeah. we live we live in a time now where you just feel like you're walking on eggshells all the time. And and I, and I know I feel this, you know, especially now that I have a business and I have employees and I have. I just feel like I'm always walking on eggshells all the time and I have staff and I have a, an online media team. And then they have the, the people and the, the good people in the chat. We love you guys. Of course, they're all, all, all of you guys are great. Uh, but you know, you have all these people that, that they either look up to you or they're watching you or they're thinking. And so you just like, Oh my God, I just don't want to say the wrong thing at the wrong time. But you, you just can't live like that. in in my opinion, you know, at some point that you're going to upset some people and you just kind of have to be okay with that. And so when you said those things, if you, if that was heartfelt and you think you had a good reason for it, then I don't think that's inherently bad. Yeah. It, you know, I, I hear that. It makes a lot of sense. I think I like kind of just want to counter that. And like, you know, I, I just like, I just don't want to be causing harm, you know, to, to people in my life, like not like people in my life, but like to anyone, you know, like if, if I have like a, a great reason, you know, to, to be sort of hurting someone's business or, or whatever, like, you know, like, so be it. But, you know, I, I, I just don't, you know, like, of course I fucking hate that guy. Of course I hated him when I tweeted that, but like, you know, I, I don't think, uh, you know, I don't, I don't think that's enough. I, I really don't sort of want to cause harm, you know, just like, you know, there's, there's so many different people I know that are so nervous about this interview and all the different things I can say about them. And like, I just don't have an interest. Like, I just don't want to be causing people harm, like just for the hell of it, you know? Yeah. That, okay. I, I, I see where you're coming from. Let's talk about maybe some of the specific things that Nick Airball said in that interview. Uh, sure. He he seemed to think pretty precisely. He knew where you made your money and how much money and in which games. Right. Yeah. 
what, what was there? How true were those things he said? I, I, I mean, there's, there's a couple of different things or a couple of different games he mentioned. Sure. Well, if, yeah. Just yeah. Sure. I think, I mean, I think, yeah, I'm, almost everything during that long run is just like complete and utter horseshit too. I mean, it doesn't even advance his cause. That's what's crazy about it. But again, like I already pointed out, like him just making up a number about how, how much I beat like, you know, someone in, in a heads up match, like, He's wrong. He has no idea. Like, it's fucking ridiculous. He mentioned, like, there was a game uh, that, like, Rick Solomon and JRB played every time that I was kicked out of. Completely made up. Like, literally, like not one ounce did, did, of truth. Did the game so was let, made up? Or the... so, let, so let me clarify. That was a game that ran almost weekly for about two years. It was built around one specific player. Uh, Rick Solomon played a few times. JRB played a few times at least 90% of the time, neither of them were even in the lineup, <laughs> okay? Uh, I always had a seat in that game uh, because the game, the guy who the game ran around, he decided who played. Him and I got along well. I always had a seat in the game. It's just that simple. I never was kicked out of the game. Uh, Rick or JRB had no say in the lineup of that game. They were guests a few times. Uh, the game didn't even play in San Diego almost all of the time, you know, like not one. Th oh, and then he also said, I made a million dollars and then got kicked out again, like just completely made up. Th these numbers are nowhere close to the correct numbers uh, on any level, you know? Uh, and I think even to go a step further than that, you know, like the whole thing was just so disingenuous about like, he does the right thing. So he gets into games and I don't do the right thing. So I don't bullshit, bullshit. Like, I've been like the poster child for how to conduct oneself at the table my whole career, well before I played on streams, how to make games fun, lively, everyone feels comfortable, you know, et cetera. Uh, and so it's just, it's just complete horseshit. But I think the biggest, the biggest thing related to all of this, and this is, I think, a bigger discussion, is just follow the money. That's it. Just follow the money. People are going to do like what's in their best uh, what's in their self-interest as it relates to them earning the most money, you know? Do you think it's convenient that, like, every time I played with Ben, like, I fucked him up? Let's be honest. Like, I destroyed this guy. Meanwhile, like, uh, Airball lost, like, what? Almost seven figures last week alone. Ben beat him heads up. They're on a podcast together. Like, Ben's a super savvy businessman who also, by the way, has other uh, revenue streams in poker. Like, the opinion is just so incredibly biased, you know? And with that said, you know, I, I think there's still something to be said here, like about like, could I be better? You know, could I be better in terms of um, making the game better for everyone, making it more fun for everyone? Uh, maybe a similar question, like, do I have a responsibility uh, as the biggest winner in the games to make sure like everyone's as comfortable as possible? I think these are super fair questions, you know? And I think if we're talking about a couple people that, that spoke out, uh, they also coincidentally are on the podcast with Nick Airball. Like not one, but the three of them literally have a podcast together, you know? And it's like, how much weight are we really going to give, you know, these opinions? These other two people are, are people that like, yes, like myself and Ryan together decided like they don't make for the best games, you know, when they min buy and, and whatever else. So of course, like their opinions are going to be very, very biased, you know? And, and I don't fault them for that, but, but maybe to give sort of a better example in terms of what I'm talking about in terms of how to be better would be like Wesley, you know, I saw like Wesley's tweet where like he said that I would kind of push the straddles. Right. Um, I, I think he makes a good point. You know, Wes is someone that I don't think is like so motivated to just like speak out against me aside from the money. Right. Wes is trying to win. Wes is trying his best. I win a lot. It's of course better for Wes uh, if I don't play, you know, but even then with that said, like, I, I think Wes has a point, you know, and I think, um, I think I could have been better. You know, I think like if Wes was trying to communicate to me, Hey, like, you know, I don't want to straddle today. Like it's, you know, it's, it's, I'm not comfortable with this size of the game. Even if he was playing 10 times bigger last week, for whatever reason, you know, I, I think like I should have done a better job of sort of, you know, honoring and respecting that. So that's, that's all like a very, that's a very long winded way of saying like, I really do see both sides of this, but yet like air balls sort of um, description of how it went down is just wildly off base. 
So just to just to talk about the the straddle thing a little bit. Sure. Um, sure. I I do feel like when you're a really good player, it, it you just have to try and be super good for the game in ways that aren't just the fact that you're going to win money. And that sure. means just being really liberal with straddles, make the game fun. Obviously, don't tank, although you don't really have an issue with that. So I'm not not trying to say that that's really to you in some capacity, but things like that. Talk with people. Right. Be, be, I, I just do. I think when you're a really good player, you do have a responsibility to be good to the game and for the game. And it's I mean, it's good in the long run for you, too. You're going to get to play more. But also, like, you know, you put the straddle on a bunch. It's like it, it's going to work out for you, man, you know, because you're going to be a good player in the game. Like it's going to in the long run. Um, I don't really want to get too deep into the straddle thing, but uh, I, I, for some reason, straddles just come up all over the place. Straddles are a hot topic, hot button issue at the Hustler Casino Live. I don't know exactly what the dynamic is with all the straddles, but it does seem like that right. that pops up a lot. Yeah, yeah. You, you know, I, I agree. You know, I think in the end, like, you know, all professionals are kind of going to, uh, you know, do like what's in their best business interest, like at the table, you know, but I think you can really kind of kill two birds with one stone um by um basically like making sure everyone feels comfortable you know that's probably like they're gonna feel better about it and it's probably better for your business overall you know and although like you know i'd like to say like i always see the forest through the trees when it comes to these sort of discussions and i do think it's been one of the many strong parts about you know my sort of business if you will you know like handling these things well is all part of it uh, I, I'm definitely open to the idea that, um, that, that it could have been better, you know? Um, but, but I think the difference is like when, you know, everyone who said anything like outside of Wes, these are all people that are close friends. Um, uh, and uh, again, like they're not getting in the games. They think I'm responsible for it. They're not happy. I think you need to like take, take those opinions with a mountain of salt, you know? And I think sort of this criticism that like, oh, well, you know, people have spoken and like they're defending Airball. No, people haven't spoken. <laughs> like Airball's three closest friends have spoken. And, well, and, and I think that goes to, it, 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 there's just so much to say about this in terms of the war on the information. But Doug, that's why, that's why, you know, I got some pushback a little from you in terms of calling Airball brilliant. He just gets it. He just gets all of yeah. these things. And yeah. he immediately knew like, we need to go to war on this guy. And, and we well, need to think, give some- I think when, go ahead. I think the word brilliant, it just gets thrown around in some places where, and I'm not saying he's a dumb guy or something. He sure, seems sure, reasonably yeah. intelligent, but yeah, I, I feel like savvy and brilliant are kind of different. I would say sure. he's a savvy guy. He, he gets Fair it. Enough. He understands Fair the enough. game. He knows how to play his role. He knows, but brilliant is kind of different like i don't think of nick airball i think of brilliant and ma i'm not trying to just needle yeah. uh mr airball but uh it, it just I, I i don't know i think the, the word may be slightly different i want we can talk about some of the other hustler players in a second here but sure. just to kind of close sure. out the airball topic sure um, yes. were there other things about the what airball said about you i'm sure there are many you could probably find but was there anything else that stuck stood out to you that airball said that you felt like was particularly untrue that you wanted to correct um Man, there was so many. <laughs> I mean, so you've, many you've gone through a bunch yeah, of them. Yeah. So if you, if you hit everything, it's all good. But yeah, um, it, yeah, you know what? I, I would say probably, but maybe this seems like a great time to just move on and, and kind of like uh, stick to what I'd hoped to do, which is, uh, again, not not just, you know, give this guy like more of a spotlight. Well, I think we're past that, though. I think we're in yeah. the in the what do we do now? Because I think I think if we're not going to give him a spotlight, we probably should just cut this, redo the first yeah. sixty minutes. And uh, I guess I would say like, uh, <laughs> the, the entire spotlight. I think is what I'm trying to say. Okay, that's that's fair enough. All right, uh, I guess like just one more thing about the other people though at Hustler, because I think that the main people that you saw talk uh, to defend Airball. I mean, he did have a chunk of people that that, that stuck up for him: uh, Brown, Bala, Lynn, uh, Wesley. Yep. Uh, those ben. are, by the way, the the first two, the, the the all of those people minus Wesley are all of the people that were on the podcast. To be was it was it four clear. was it four people or was it three? I forget. Yeah, it was four. four. Ben ben, yeah. ben also was on their first podcast. Maybe so he's think, not going to be recurring, but um, yeah, go ahead. So you think that's just so, like basically their group of friends, more or less? Yeah, absolutely. And it, you know, like I very purposely, like in my life, like you know, no one, no one who plays on these streams, like none of these are people that I hang out with, you know, in my outside life. And, uh, and, you know, poker's tough. It, 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 I think it's always been really hard for me to be close with poker players. Um, 
for a whole bunch of reasons that are maybe outside the scope of this discussion. But man, it sure comes in handy, <laughs> you know, when, when you're someone like Airball and, and you know, you're in a, a situation like this, you know, and, and we can sort of get to, since you already mentioned them by name, Lynn and Ashan later in terms of why they may have, um, you know, distaste for me uh, as it relates to um, lineup construction, you know, but, but if, uh, if we haven't made that clear already, you know, when they're not getting in the games and they believe that uh, I'm the one responsible for that, that shit really hurts. I know because I've been in that spot a million times myself. And it's really hard not to take that personally. Really hard, you know? Uh, and so, you know, even even if it's more just subconscious on their end, like, I'm, I'm sure that, like, you know, me playing a role in that really hurt them. It certainly really hurts their businesses. Um, and, and so, you know, if... They don't like me. Um, I get that. That that's fine. You know. Um, I, I don't. I wouldn't really expect them to say anything. But basically. yeah, it, it's I, tough in poker to be a really good winning player and making a lot of friends in games. It's tough to do that. I, yeah, just yeah. In general, it, it, it's a, it's yeah. This dude, like, we'll go back to this probably several more times. But in the end, you just like have to follow the money. And like when you win a lot, it's really really hard to to have friends like to make friends not have friends to like to to make friends like there's there's just like no way when like uh i, I think like what i just said is like um like misstated i kind of want to like repeat that like uh i've already kind of discussed like lynn and ashan uh in terms of like why they're not going to like me but you know the, the same point goes for nick and ryan you know like uh it got to a certain point with them where i'm winning so much money in the games like they're making money from the same exact player pool, you know, whether it's the streams during, whether it's the streams after, whether it's their additional rev revenue streams that, you know, I don't, I don't need to like throw them under the bus for or whatever. Uh, like me winning a bunch, like hurts their bottom line. And so they always needed to balance that out, you know, between, okay, well he wins a lot, but he also like brings a lot of viewers to the show. How do we manage this? How do we handle this? You know, uh, and I think it just got to a point where they just made a business decision, you know, and they said, actually, like, uh, you know, like, I don't, I don't think this is worth it anymore. And, you know, Garrett helped us build our business, build our brand. And, and now it's huge. Let's be honest. HCL is huge. And so That's I don't huge. think they, I don't think they need me anymore. Um, and I really can't fault them for that. Like, you know, as a business decision. In terms of like, you know, loyalty or whatever, you know, that's sort of like a, a different discussion. But but I will certainly say if we're just looking at this sort of objectively, you know, as as all sort of businessmen acting in self-interest, I, I can't fault them for that. Yeah, and it, you, you want to balance making sure that you have people on your show that people want to see, even if they're professional players with trying to have good games. And when you have someone where they bring viewership and they make the game worse, it's kind of a weird spot because it's definitely best today to have them on but is it best to have them in a year if they're on all the time and those are the kinds of trade-offs that you have to make when you're on a show but that's that's your business you know they need they need to be aware of those things and be making those choices and i'm, I'm sure that they've done a good job because otherwise they wouldn't have the show they have today yeah i mean that's all correct but but again I, it, it, it's just a really important component of this that uh that maybe is being lost. Like it's more than just them making decisions on what's best for the show. They have several revenue streams related to that same recreational player pool. And some of it's obvious. Nick is obviously playing with some of the same players that I was playing with, you know, yeah, true. et cetera. Ryan is hopping in the game, you know, plenty of the time after the stream, et cetera. And some of those revenue streams are less obvious, but like make no mistake when they see me win as much as I do. And, and, you know, the numbers, obviously much more than that, that Ryan sees off stream. Like he is very displeased with that. Facts. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that that's fair enough. All right. Uh, let's go back and talk about HCL. Just a couple more things here. And then uh, I want to pivot maybe a couple other subjects. Um, so I assume you saw the Nick Vertucci, you're banned, but you're not banned, but you're not invited interview, which, uh, I just there there was all kinds of pretty amazing humor to be found in that one. I did a video because it just I, I just I I I loved I loved the whole thing. Frankly, it was great. It was amazing. So what's the situation? Are you banned? Are you not banned? Are you not invited? What was the spot? Like, what's the situation? If you wanted to come back, do you think you could play? Have they told you that you're not invited? What what's what, what's the situation? Sure. Let's go. Let's go back a bit because uh, this is something that you know I want to talk about because because it, it hurts. It, it hurts. Um, let's 
go back to, I think a little bit, or maybe actually immediately after they released their investigation report, right? Uh, and me, Nick and Ryan, you know, had a brief group text where we agreed that, you know, we would, uh, we, we'd say just publicly, um, that we were all open to the idea of, of working together in the future, right? That was it. That was the end of the discussion. Uh, at no point before, during, after that, did I ever express to them I had any interest in playing any poker, let alone on HCL. Uh, that did not change. <laughs> you know, like I still had no immediate plans. You know, I, of course, I made one trolley post about, uh, you know, like maybe I'll hop in if there was a seat. But the truth is, Doug, like, I was in not even close to a place where I was entertaining the idea of playing poker. And obviously I knew how that was going to play out. Like Keating's not going to let me play in the game. The fans are going to lose their shit at the idea of me playing in the game. And like, I'm just trolling, you know? Um, but I can also to, personally attest yeah, that because we talked about this several times over that period of time. And you told me sure. multiple, cause I've been, I've been trying to get you out here one day, one day I'll wear you down, but it's gonna, uh, it'll you, happen you, for sure, it'll, man. Nice. You got, you that's got good. Me I'm at some point for sure. Yeah. Perfect. That's what I love to hear. Um, but, you were, you told me extensively. I, I I'm just on the place I want to play. Obviously, I'm yeah. gonna have a kid in a couple of months here, and you know, with everything that's going on, like I just I'm just on a place that I want to play. So uh, I, I'm just adding some credibility that 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 was happening. You know, at least privately during this for, this this part. Yeah, for sure. So anyway, so so let's just move ahead to Nick's podcast with Ben, and maybe this is some of the vitriol. Ben has for me. He does this podcast with Nick and it's not like Ben is just like, you know, like <laughs> Ben is a very interesting person who like runs, like he's an angel investor. Like if any of you have seen Shark Tank, like the guy's like, obviously like anyone who, who has that career, like he's, he's a very fascinating guy. And yet like the only thing Nick puts on it is just like some clickbait for like the 30 seconds, you know, when they talk about me, you know, and I even saw Ben make a tweet about that. Like, Hey guys, like, watch the podcast. It's about a lot more than whether or not Garrett's been, you know, but anyway, as it relates to, um, as it relates to sort of the banning itself, I think that's what really bothered me. You know, uh, it got leaked to, uh, you know, to, to Craig at poker org who then sent to me like, Hey, you know, this is what's happening. Is this true? You know, in terms of, uh, Nick is releasing this video. And I was like, I just texted Nick and Ryan. I was like, what is this? Like, I have no idea. You know, I, I felt very ambushed. Uh, and it was just incredibly passive aggressive. And, and Nick's response to me was basically like, this wasn't planned. Like, it, you know, I was like caught off guard with it. It's just such disingenuous bullshit, Doug. Like, and it fucking hurt, man. Like, I've known Nick a very, very long time. Like, the Nick, reality you, you've is- You've known Nick Vertucci a long time? Nick Vertucci. Yeah, oh, okay. I didn't, I didn't know that. Time. Yeah, yeah. Nick Vertucci used to uh, play in the same games as me at Commerce when I first moved to LA, going back to 2012. You know, wow, okay. uh, Nick Vertucci was someone I played with at minimum weekly uh, live at the bike when I first started playing on live streams. You know, I've been playing at least once a week with Nick almost for, you know, I don't know, 12 years or something like that. Wow, you know, okay. and, and there were definitely times in that period where, you know, I considered him a friend and, and vice versa, you know. Um, and uh, so anyway, so I, I think let, let, let me uh, sort of go back in chronology, just like several weeks. Everyone tells me everything. So many people were texting me, hey, like Ben says you're banned from HCL. Like, is this true? You know, and I'm just like, I have no idea. Like, you know, like I'm not going to listen to Ben on it. Like I'm not going to spread any rumors. And honestly, I didn't even care. Like I had no interest in coming back to that show or any show for a very long time anyway, you know. Um, but the point was, this had been talked about amongst many different people. So in this staged interaction between Ben and Nick, where Ben goes, well, is Garrett banned? Like, it's just total horseshit. They've had that conversation many, many times. To further prove that point, Nick does not run, run a live stream, Doug. It's all done in post-production. So if Ben caught him off guard and then he said something that he didn't want to say publicly. Oh, his, his, then his, show's, he, not, his show's not live? It's not live. Post-production. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Right. Uh, I know. Cause like the one I did with him, uh, that that's, that's how it was. Right. Well, maybe um, we should have live, man. We could have recorded. We could have edited out all the parts. Right, exactly. Yeah. I, live, I, is I live is good. Live is good. It's authentic. <laughs> um, but, but anyway, my point with the whole live thing is if Nick didn't want to throw me under the bus, if Nick didn't want to use me for clicks, if he didn't want to passive aggressively, you know, basically like be like, ha ha, like, 
we're dumping you before you can dump us sort of thing. Why not just delete that? I, I just don't even know like why he poked the bear. I, I, I really don't yeah, get that's it. A good, like, that's a good question. Ev everything was like, everything was cool. You know, like they maybe suspected that like I was never going to play on their live stream, but like, I wasn't about to go embarrass them. I wasn't about to do anything, you know, yeah. like, but like when he comes at me like that and also just, he should be embarrassed, dude. Like the thirsty way that he still promoted the shit. Like he's like Garrett's banned, but by the way, we still are going to use him for clicks today. It's like, well, come so, on. Well, well so it was, it was clear what happened there, which was Ben wanted you to say him to say he was banned because Ben does not want you on the show. I think it's pretty clear. For sure. And then, and then Nick realized that there was an opportunity here, which is if he says Garrett is banned, that will be a big story that will generate a lot of viewership. Sure. Because when you put your name in things at the moment, it's big. Okay. So he's like, well, I want to kind of do that because I realize how big that'll be, but I don't want to do it too firmly because it's, For sure. I'm not saying completely not true because you're not playing and you're not invited into the games or maybe the players won't play, whatever it might be. So he kind of tried to have his cake and eat it too, where he was basically trying to capitalize on saying you're banned, even though the, the truth of the matter really is that it was sort of mutual, but also a lot, some of the players don't want to play with you, which might which might impact that to where you can't play. You know what I'm saying? It, it was exactly all that, while also trying uh, and failing miserably at not upsetting the audience. <laughs> you know, like, he's not actually banned, you know? Uh, it, it's, I don't know, it, it just sucked. It, the whole thing was just, like, so incredibly unnecessary. Doug, like, I, I get it. Again, uh, I really can at least understand if if even in some cases, like, you know, consider people faultless for, for some of the things they're doing from a, a business perspective. Um, but this one, this one just seemed like the cost benefit, like how much money is he really making by like, you know, like throwing me under the bus and like, even then, like how much would it have cost him just to shoot me a text saying, Hey, like I want some more clicks for this. So I'm going to be announcing this, you know, and, and instead of just like, you know, yeah, uh, that's a little know, weird. Craig from weird. poker or just like having to reach out to me and be like, is this shit true? Or you know, but it, it, it's, it's whatever, you know, like, I don't, again, I don't care, you know, 99% of things I could say about Nick, like, I, I don't want to, like, I, I really don't care, but this one, this one just, you know, it, it, it hit close to home. And, and so I wanted to speak out on it. I, I think when you, when you have a voice, you, you kind of owe it to people to, to let them have a chance to talk as long as they're, you know, between neutral and you, you have between neutral and good relationship. Obviously if someone comes after you or, or they're out of line, then it, it's a bit of a different story, but um, it seems kind of strange to me that he wouldn't at least talk internally with um, with you and 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 Ryan to, to kind of decide what to to put out there. But so, what's yeah, the situation sure. now? What's the situation like now? Do do you think you'd be able to play in those games if you wanted to, or does it not really seem like that? Yeah, I mean, I don't I don't really know the answer to that. Uh, but I don't think it's doesn't really matter in the sense that like I don't sure. I don't want to play on their stream. You know, like what you know everything that's happened and there was obviously so many things that happened before like there's like a lot of hurt feelings there you know yeah but i don't want to kind of put my foot in my mouth with things and like speak in absolutes you know sure. so who knows what like my life is going to look like in you know several years or whatever but certainly at the moment like i would have no interest in supporting their stream and and it's kind of a moot point because it's very obvious uh the feeling is mutual so uh, so I feel like we've kind of gone through most of the HCL stuff and the stream stuff, whether there's anything else in terms of those games or the show or anything else that you want to talk about before we jump into a couple of other subjects we got lined up here. Yeah. Um, I think we can keep moving. Okay, cool. All right. So uh, I, w I want to bring this up because I, I feel, I feel like it's, a, it's another subject here. We're changing gears a little bit, but we talked a little bit about Matt Berkey and I, um, you know, I wanted to kind of kick it off with this and then I want you to jump in, but sure. we talked a little bit today before the show and you, you, you felt pretty strongly that Matt Berkey is not a scammer and airball came on my show, obviously, and he called Matt Berkey a scammer. And I want to say that I agree with that. Matt Berkey is not a scammer. He, he, he is a trustworthy person that will not steal money. He's not a scammer. And I, I personally believe that he is a fraud. Now, I know you don't believe that and you have your own opinions and your experiences with Matt Berkey, but I did feel like I want to say that just because Airball had that opinion that doesn't reflect my views, uh, I think that that fraud is a more uh, accurate word for, for Matt Berkey. But I wanted to give you a chance to at least talk about your experiences with Berkey and, and, and that subject in general, because apparently Airball yeah. and Berkey are going to be battling heads up. So it's, I guess, kind of still tangentially related. 
For sure. Yeah. I mean, this is, this is obviously like very topical, you know, given that they're going to be playing, but it's, it's also topical because, uh, you know, I, I guess I need to take back what I said. Uh, Airball took a 60 second timeout uh, from talking shit about me the whole time to accuse Berkey of being a scammer, you know? Um, and I don't know, it's just so rich. This is just so rich from Airball, like the same guy who, who said, quote, Garrett's one of the shadiest people in poker. Like, are you fucking kidding me? Like, are you like, that is just so out of bounds. It just, it's just so completely untrue from anyone who's ever followed my career publicly. Yeah, privately. that's not true at all. Yeah. It's just, it's just fucking ridiculous, you know, while in the same breath calling Matt Berkey a scammer. It's, it's just really fucked up, you know? So I'm just going to say a couple things, you know, uh, about Matt uh, again, especially because he's topical right now. Uh, Matt and I have never hung out outside a casino. It's never once happened. And after Jack four happened, he was so kind. He was such a support system. We talked so much on the phone and it was so much completely unrelated to the ins and outs of an investigation or whatever. He just like was a friend who like listened to someone who honestly for quite a while was really hurting. And so am I biased here? Fuck yes. Fuck yes. Like, I think Matt is a wonderful person. And, you know, as for the fraud part, I think it'd be remiss for me not to like at least sort of speak on it. Uh, I used to not think Matt played at an elite level. Um, I think he's gotten much, much better in recent years. I don't, you know, I, I haven't reviewed hundreds of hours of tape with him, but I have reviewed 20, 30, something like that hours in, in the recent years we've played. And I think he plays well. It, 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 you know, and so it, to kind of go beyond that, it's like we kind of just have to agree to disagree. But you know, again, you know, you can you can sort of take my uh, opinion with a grain of salt here because sure. I, obviously I consider you know he's someone I care about. Yeah, I mean, my my main problems with Matt Berkey are uh, you know he, he just he just feels like he's a lot more intelligent uh -huh. than he is, and he thinks using some big words are going to save him. And he goes on his podcast and he talks shit about all kinds of stuff with basically no information or knowledge. He's done that about my businesses. He's done that about me. And uh, I just feel like he's not someone that should be training people. When I've played with Matt Berkey, I see someone that is a struggling mid-stakes player at best that thinks they're very, very good at poker. Whenever I see Matt Berkey hands, there's usually a lot of questionable stuff going on. And uh, I just don't think he's a particularly good poker player who has no real track record of results in almost any capacity other than a screenshot he posted from his phone where he inputs the digits. So I guess, I guess to me, you know, when I look at people that are really good at poker, I look at the verified crushers that you know are winning and things that you can see. And when I look at Matt Berkey's track record and things like that, there, there isn't a track record. Um, and I do think in poker, there are so many people trying to be something they're not particularly with poker coaching. And it's not even, that I'm trying to promote my own site. Like, like sure. if you're not going to go to upswing, there are great sites out there like Run It Once. Phil Goffin's always done an incredible job. Uh, if you're not, I've always said, if you're not going to have something, you should go to Run It Once, just point blank. Um, but basically, I just feel like we we do need to sometimes call out people if we feel like they're kind of taking advantage of a situation in an audience. And, and I do feel like Matt Berkey does that. For sure. I mean, that's like, for, let me say, for sure, not like I agree with you. For sure, like I understand why you feel that way. And, and a lot of what you just said, I, I can't, you know, I I don't know. I don't have an opinion on it. Basically, right, my, you know, yeah. those aren't things like I, I, I can speak on. Um, what I can say about this uh, is I know both of you pretty well at this point, and you guys are both very good dudes, you know, and it is sad that like, you know, somewhere along the line, like one of you came after the other. I have no idea where the genesis of that started. E neither of you probably even know. We don't have to, we don't so have to go through it. It's yeah, yeah, ne no, yeah, of course, but neither of you even probably know. But once someone, you know, gets like sort of hurt feelings or feels attacked either personally or in their business, then the other one fires back and it just goes back and forth. And, uh, you know, it, it's tough. And that's part of why I've really like tried to avoid that shit, not even because it like affects my business, but like it's just a really good like sort of thing to live by in life is to like try to find the good in people, you know, and it's. Yeah, you know, we're, we're built, we're built a little different, Garrett. You're, you're a yeah, much nicer guy than I am. That, I mean, I don't, you come know, at, if you, you, I don't know <laughs> sorry, if that's true, but like, it, it's more just like, there's been so much bullshit, like all over like poker Twitter and the internet, like this week. And man, I just saw a lot of the back and forth between you and Matt specifically. And I was just like, 
fuck, man, I wish each of them could see what I see in the other one, you know, but you know, that, that's not life and, and it is what it is. And uh, there's no way that I'm going to uh, be able to, to, to mediate a, <laughs> uh, uh, a truce between the two of you today. And so I'm not going to try. It's pretty, pretty unlikely. I think it's okay if people don't like each other. I don't think we all have to sing Kumbaya. I think oh, I, don't, I don't like everyone, bro. I fucking hate Nick Airball. No, <laughs> I, I got that. I'm just I got saying that. <laughs> I, I really like you and Berkeley. Like okay. to the point that like I'm surprised that you don't like each other. That's all. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's that's totally good. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh moving on. Let's talk a little bit about stream integrity. I think I think if we look at the way that live streams have gone over the last, you know, really since Possible, when we saw someone, Mike Possible allegedly cheat for a year and a half on the stream for a quarter million dollars. I think stream security has been a pretty big issue. And at least for me, uh, you know, now that I, I've been running a stream for about a year or so, trying to, to, to make sure you're doing the right thing for the players. I think, I think that we're kind of at an interesting point with, with whole cards and with essentially the way that streams should operate in terms of protecting their player pool. I, I think that we've taken a lot of, of big steps forward and I, I do like some of the stuff Hustler has done. Like they banned phones at the table, they banned devices at the table. I think that stuff's good. It makes it harder for people to be able to, to relay or, or get notifications. Um, and I, I also think that streams that are moving towards a no whole cards in the back approach, like for example, at the lodge, we do not have your whole cards. I think that we need to have more and more focus kind of put onto that direction for streams. But I guess, what are your thoughts on, on, stream integrity and and how important is that to you moving forward after what happened yeah yeah i think that's kind of been lost in the mix you know like in the of the the multitude of reasons why i haven't played poker stream security is right up there you know and i i think i think when uh it's extremely likely you are cheated in a poker hand i have to give this legalese comment every single time uh like it fucks with you man it, it fucks with you. You know, I <laughs> like I, I've seen, you know, many players they get cheated, they lose their fucking minds, you know. Yeah, I've and seen that too. I've seen it, you know, and and that's very real for, for me as well. I, I'm very paranoid uh you know about that moving forward. And so stream security is so important to me and it's played a huge role in me being like, I don't know if this is it. Like in terms of poker. Like the only poker games I'm getting in are stream games. That's the only place like I can add value, you know. I'm not out there running home games or politicking, you know, like trying to round up like a, a Rolodex of recreational players, you know, it's either streams or, or I don't play poker. And if I can't trust the security on streams, like, I don't know how I can play poker, you know? So this isn't to say that I, as a blanket statement, don't trust streams, right. um, just that security is very very important to me and so you know of all of the different things that have been discussed related to stream security in recent months to me the most important issue by far is do the members of the production team have access to the real-time whole card information right it's been referred to as a trustless system can you create a trustless system where nobody not yeah. the owner not the employee making 20 dollars an hour who didn't get a background check motherfucking nobody has access to the whole cards in real time you know i know live at the bike does that um i think i've heard that your stream does that as well is that correct yeah we don't we don't have whole cards and and so I, to me it seems this needs to be a mandatory thing industry-wide well this is this is where the the argument sort of comes into play right because first off there hasn't been that option with most of the software until recently it's a recent thing that rolled out couple months ago it rolled out and when the watch we launched our stream we've had it since so we've not had whole cards now for I don't know, a month or two or whatever whatever that's it's been um but there is where it becomes kind of difficult is there is a quality loss for production where you're not able to edit things sort of in real time so yeah. hustlers production and their overlay and things like that they do a really good job and they very rarely have errors in order to have that they have to have the cards at least with where the software is at today for the for the version that they're that we both run so we we don't have cards but we have problems sometimes and we get we get attacked for that like we messed up a hand yesterday where perkins stacked me or doubled up for like 450k and we had to stack in wrong on the goddamn flop and it, it, stuff like that happens more because we essentially are not able to edit it in real time and I'm actually kind of interested, if you're watching this video, you can leave a comment below, but I'm kind of interested in what do people think about this? Like, what are viewers? Obviously, players are first, right? You're putting up the money, you're, you're going to the game, you need to trust them. But do you think viewers care? I, I feel like they, they might 
not? I don't know. What do you think? Well, the first thing I think of is the, that's fucked up. Like they have this competitive advantage that you guys don't simply because you guys are trying to do the right thing and protect the integrity of the game. I don't, I, that, first of all, I don't, I don't even think that, you know, I think it should be an industry wide thing for that reason alone. So everyone's on a level playing field. But beyond that, what do I think the fans want? I think the fans want to watch poker. And this is, you know, as I've said before, this is the existential threat to live stream poker. Like how many cheating uh, sort of um, scandals, we can call it just in general, like can the live stream industry go through before it's just done, right? Before it's just over. And so I think anyone who has a stake, if they like live streams, if they're players on live stream, like trying to protect themselves, why wouldn't you want that? You know, like, do you really think like, let's talk about the players. Do you really think that like it's more important to them that like the stream has a slightly better production quality versus being able to protect the integrity of the stream? I mean, shit, like if if it was a trustless system where you couldn't see people's whole cards, like, man, I might have been already playing poker now. That's like what a big deal, you know, this is to me. And it's a big deal for poker. A cheating scandal was terrible for poker. Streams no longer running is terrible for poker. And let's look at the flip side this explosion of streams and i mean they just keep coming man like uh that shit is so good for poker you know you know and and yeah just anything that can be done to improve the security is the biggest deal in the world and, and we need to hold people's feet to the fire you know because clearly you said hcl's not doing it uh, i think the community at large needs to speak up to that and it's not asking that much of them you, you know it's not asking them hey you know this is going to cost you a million a year. It's like, check that box, check that box in well, the software and, and move forward. Go ahead. Yeah. I, I actually, I had a call with Ryan right before we went on because I, I knew we were going to discuss this and th they're open to it. If, if we could figure out a way to, cause they use slightly different software and there's, it's difficult because of certain reason. I'm not the technical sure. guy. So I tried to understand, Same. but Same. so yeah. I, I, had, I had my producer explain stuff to me. So I, I, I know that if there's a way to do it reasonably, that they would right now that they do not. And, you know, kind of my, my viewpoint, I also actually want to quickly address as well. You said competitive advantage. Like I want Hustler to do really, really well, because if they do really well, then our stream grows. And I, I'm not trying to have the number one stream. I'm trying to have the biggest stream I can. The bigger Hustler is, the more people watch, the more views that I get on my channel, the more views I get on the lot channel, the more the whole space grows. Like I just want my business to make money and grow. I I, I don't need to, to to try and have the biggest best stream, right? So I, I'm not sure. I'm not too concerned about the competitive advantage part. What I'm concerned about is I've been a high stakes poker player for a lot of years now. I've played some very big games, and I and I have been cheated once. And I know how fucked you are if someone can see your cards. You are fucked. You are going to lose a lot of money. It is guaranteed. Because and if you're so, if you're a good cheater, bro, you could do it forever. If someone was savvy at that, they could fucking wreck the games forever and no one would ever find out. And this was something I had to live with in the back of my mind forever. You know, it's just it's just so fortunate that like Robbie was likely a pawn in a likely cheating operation and she fucked the whole thing up, or whoever signaled to her fucked the whole thing up. Imagine someone who was really good at cheating who told her when and how she I'm, could do it forever go ahead i'm sure that happens in lots of places there are so many yes. streams and especially if you play in a smaller stream where you don't really know what's going on in the back there's just some dude with your cards you know there's just some dude with so your cards. Fun, he might bro. be a nice dude i'm not saying it, it could be a girl we don't know they might be great but they might not be and if they're not you are fucked so I guess, I guess just coming from the, I'm a poker player background and, and, and admittedly it hurts our show legitimately hurts our show. We have a bunch of errors because of this, but I said to our, our team, if we have an opportunity to not have whole cards, we're doing that. I, I, I'm not, I don't want any liability of someone getting cheated on our show period. And even if it hurts our show. And I do think that is where things should move. I think that some of the stream software is going to continue to advance where we can figure out some solutions to these things. And I know that HDL is open to that. Um, so hopefully we can figure something out and it goes that direction. But I personally feel like player security just has to be number one, especially, it's, I mean, for any yeah. amount of money, not just for Isaac, for any amount of money, it's, it needs, it's it needs to be number one. Got. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, I mean, like I said, like my future in live streaming depends very much on this one single thing. It's like that important to me, you know? Uh, and, uh, like another thing I wanted to say about this was, um, I can't remember. Hold on. 
<laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. We got a couple a couple questions here, and, and then we can wrap up. It's already been an hour and a half, and and this is probably um, about the length that we're looking to go. But let's talk about the future, because you've been out of the mix for six months now, and yeah. obviously a lot of people want to hear from you. They want to watch you. They enjoy watching you play poker. What does your future look like with playing poker? I know you kind of been back and forth, and if you want to play at all. Do you see yourself returning to playing on poker streams? And do you have any kind of idea what that timeline would look like? Yeah. um, You know, I know you can relate to this. And, uh, you know, I know a great many people watching this can relate in terms of uh, poker can be brutal. You know, like uh, the the zero-sum nature of it, as I tweeted about, you know, really affects me. The politics really affect me. The, you know, the huge losing days really affect me. Uh, Just the stress, even only playing once a week of just playing for hundreds of thousands of dollars, it's it's just rough on me, you know? And uh, these were all things before Jack 4 and before I went from being concerned about live stream security to, I don't know, paranoid, you know, like uh, about it. And so all of those kind of lead to, you know, I've kind of gone back and forth. I would say I've mostly not even entertained the idea of playing poker in the last six months. Uh, and in the last couple of weeks, I, I think that that mindset has shifted, um, you know, just a little bit. And, and I don't know if it was, you know, like, you know, Vertucci doing what he did or, you know, my daughter likely being born in the next couple of weeks or or whatever. But I'm I'm more open to it now. But like I said, I, I don't think it's likely that you'll, you'll see me playing poker once a week, um, you know, ever or, or anytime soon. You know, I think it's unlikely I play poker you know, until, you know, uh, well after my daughter's born. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm definitely, you know, interested in it. Um, and, you know, if I was going to play, man, I, w- I would only play on live streams. <laughs> like, obviously, those are the only games I'm getting into anyway. But it's so funny because when I first started playing, like, I'm like, fuck, I don't want the cameras. I don't want, like, anyone seeing how I'm playing. I don't really want anyone to notice me, recognize me, like, whatever. But, like, Man, it's been nice. It's been, you know, it's been really nice. You know, uh, the, the 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 support, the messages, you know, pre Jack Four, post Jack Four, like, you know, despite the pain recently, like I've enjoyed playing uh, on streams. I've enjoyed being a public figure. I've enjoyed kind of just going on uh, on streams and just doing what I've done for twenty years and just showing out and and having people kind of celebrate that, you know, um, and. And so I'm pretty sure I'll, I'll, you know, I'll be giving the fans a, at least a little of that, you know. At yeah. Some point. It's just, yeah, it's just that's a matter what of the people when. want. <laughs> it's just a matter of when and 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 sort of, you know, at, at what frequency moving forward in my life. You know, I I went from playing poker, you know, doing poker related things 60 hours a week for the first decade to a little less the next few years, and then in the last five years plus, like it being very part time. And I think that's going to continue to be the natural evolution for me. Instead of like 10 hours of poker related activities a week, maybe it'll become five, 10 hours a month, you know, something like that. Um, Because I'm always just trying to figure out how to incorporate this really, really tough game uh, into an otherwise peaceful existence. It's difficult too. There are a bunch of things people don't really think about with poker that that I I think are are important elements of it. So like, like the biggest thing for me is sleep. On days I play poker, I get home, I'm just wired. I can't sleep. Just can't sleep. And yeah. I'm just I'm just I'm wrecked the next day. I go to bed super late. I I, I can't I, I can't sleep in very well for some reason. And that aspect hurts. And then uh it cuts in. <laughs> that it seems cuts particularly focus. problematic with a two month old. <laughs> that's, yeah. That's oh, like, I'm, I'm, I'm running exponentially worse. Huh? Dude, I'm running so hot. He just sleeps sound through the night, nine hours, just straight through. He's, I'm running really, <laughs> yeah. really, I'm just hope, hoping I hold, but straight yeah. through the night. Yeah. I mean, obviously you're off to a great start, whatever, whatever you and your, your, your team are doing to keep him asleep. That's incredible. I think there's just a lot of variance, man. I think some kids, I hear horror stories that it just goes on for years and then waking up all the time and some, some just some sleep well. So I, I just think yeah. you have to hope you run hot, but, um, I, either way, you know, I'm definitely not blaming him for the, the lack of sleep. It's, it's me playing poker and until whatever hour in the morning. Um, but there's that element to it. And then there's the stress. The, the stress is a real thing. You, when you say playing for poker for hundreds of thousands of dollars, you know, when the stakes get really high and the money is important and, it, and it's impactful, you're okay losing 
as long as you feel like you did your best and you're you're happy with the way you lost. And when you have these moments where you do something dumb and you or maybe you misread a situation or you, or maybe you misread a spot or, or or whatever, you make a big mistake for a lot of money. It hurts when you're like, I'm an idiot. Why did I think that was a thing? And then and then yeah. you have to pay a huge financial cost to that. Yeah. And so it becomes obsessive. You have to always be thinking about it, always be trying to prevent that, always be fine tuning, always be. And your mind just gets in this in this kind of loop. It's like it's like I feel like I have two kind of like I have poker mode and I have non poker mode. Same. And when, and when you're in poker mode, it really takes over a lot of the other things to play at a, at a, at a high level uh, for an extended period of time. So it's tough to find that balance. And, and I think now that I've, you know, obviously I said I was going to stop playing poker and, uh, I guess, I guess, you know, sometimes you end up back in there playing, but, um, now that I'm back in a little bit going from playing full time to playing occasionally, it is kind of tough to balance. Okay. Today I'm a dad today. I'm at home today. I'm doing YouTube videos today. I'm whatever. And then, okay, today I'm a poker player. And the next day you're not. And to go in and out of poker mode, it's just, it's just kind of hard to, to find that balance. Yeah, that's 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 really well put, and I I think that's like you explained sort of why, amongst many other reasons, why I'm very unsure of, of if or what role I want poker to have in my life. Um, really well in that, like, you know, I think you can relate to this as well. But I'll, I'll just speak for myself. Like, I am such a perfectionist, you know, and that there's plenty of bad that comes from that, and a, and a few good. But like, I am obsessive about poker. I am obsessive about playing my very best every session, every hand, every street always have been. And I make no apologies for, for that, you know? Uh, and, uh, and so that shit carries a great weight on you all day, every day, even if you're only playing once a week, you know? And so it's more just like the, the headspace it takes up, you know? And, and you made a great point, and it's it's funny, sort of the the way our lives have kind of mirrored one another. Where you have a you have a uh, a newborn, and I'm about to have a newborn. Like so much of my headspace will be about that child in a matter of days, and so it's really impossible for me to predict how I'm going to feel in you know six weeks or or even six yeah. months. You're also yeah, I mean, so you're now at the point where you could have a a, a child at any point, and so it just that has to be the focus and that has to be the schedule. And then once you have your child, then there's going to be that period where you adjust to things and you learn. And Oh, by the way, can I give you a tip? Okay. This is a pro tip. Okay. Pro. I've been a parent for eight weeks. After your child is born, you're going to not want to put them in the nursery because you're going to want to, you're going to want to you know love them and, and cradle them and spend time with them, which is good. Yeah. You definitely want some skin to skin right out of the gate. Right. But then we felt like we didn't want to send them to the nursery because we didn't want to seem like we didn't love our child. But we had both been awake for like, I mean, she like, you know, two, we slept like two hours in like, in like 36 hours and we were just exhausted. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The healthcare professionals will do an incredible job and it's yeah. going to be your last time to get that fully awesome healthcare situation. And then in two days you're going home. So just take yeah. advantage of that. If you're run down, you're not a bad parent if you send the nursery. Okay. Seriously. No, that, that's super helpful. You know, Jen and I have read so many books about all this stuff. And so in one of them, crib sheets. She talks about that exact thing and supports what you said both practically as well as the research behind it. And so I know that's part of our birthing plan is okay, to just cool. get some get some goddamn sleep. I know, <laughs> you know but then that. but then but then you see a human and you're like, oh, I don't want to send them off. It means I don't love them. No, no, you love them, right. but but you're also you're a human too. Hum humans need sleep. For sure. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I think just like, you know, maybe another like just overarching thought I had, because I know we're starting to to come to the end here, and so I don't want to forget this is. Man, my, my whole life, certainly my whole poker career, like I've really tried to be above the fray. I've tried to be above like all the whatever, you know? And when I started playing on live streams and whatever, I really tried my very best to just like show up and play poker, you know? And yeah, there's been some like little things that have happened, you know, where, you know, Dylan was a dick to me and then, you know, I clapped back or whatever on the internet. But mostly I've really tried to just focus on that. And obviously things have gone super sidetracked and obviously like certain things I could have handled better. And, and you know, uh, and, and that hasn't ended, you know, with me just like saying fuck Nick Airball on Twitter, but moving forward, man, I'd really, really like whatever my poker career looks like to be focused on poker. And, and obviously like I, I carry, you know, the, the responsibility on that, but that's what people know me for. That's what they give a fuck about, you know, like, 
you know, okay, maybe I did a podcast where people learn some things or whatever, but almost everyone, like, they just want to watch me play poker. And, 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 you know, that needs to be sort of like the plan moving forward. And, and ideally stay away from a lot of this shit that's, that's really caused, uh, uh, I, I guess, like a, a lot of sort of anxiety and, and, and stress in my life. A good way of looking at that, by the way, is th think about like basketball or football, right? Yeah. How many views do the games get? And then you compare that to how many views do the podcast get afterwards? Mm -hmm. And because those spaces are so big, the podcast might get hundreds of thousands, maybe even millions. But guess what? The games get millions and millions and millions and millions. Because yep. you know what people really care about? Watching the thing. Yep. The thoughts afterwards and the back and forth and the drama and the 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 you know, whatever back and forth, that those things tend to be much less popular than the thing itself. So I think the people that just really kind of keep to themselves and, and, and try and do a good job, there's something to be said for that because that is what's most important. But there is a weird element in poker, which is it's not like in those things where what matters is purely ability, right? In football, the best players play you know, in basketball, in any sport. In poker, the most interesting players and best for the game players play. So there is there is some strategic stuff there where if you're just super vanilla, nice to everybody, and then you know, and you, this isn't really for you because you have an audience, but I just mean in general, those people are typically not going to get the, the the spots to play. So it is a show, and the show needs to have heroes and villains, and it, I do think it is good for poker to have people be assholes and get fucking stacked sometimes. Like when Nick Airball lost seven hundred fifty k, that was so great for content. Do you realize how many people were ecstatic? People were giddy. Yeah, they were, it was, it, of course. Like, this is the best day ever. Nick Airball just lost three, four, Me too, man. Also, <laughs> see? Yeah, see? Yeah, see? There like, you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, if people think, like, I can't be petty sometimes, no. Like, I could be petty as fuck. Like, I saw your video and loved every minute of it. You know, like, it, we're human, you know, like, I can be petty as fuck as well, you know, but I, I definitely agree with what you're saying. But, you know, I do think it's at least worth mentioning that, like, you know, my whole live stream career, like, I've just been myself. And, like, Maybe like my personality, whatever, like maybe that in and of itself makes me an interesting character, but I've never had to resort to gimmicks. You know what I mean? I've never had to go in and just start yelling at people and whatever. Again, you and I can agree to disagree whether that's reasonable behavior on a live stream, fair enough. But like, that's just never what I've done. And like what I think has always sort of brought me an audience is just watching me play, you know? Yeah. And, and so in my case specifically, like, I think it's just super fair to just say like, Gary, just shut the fuck up and just let us know when you're playing. You why, do you, why do you think that worked for you? Because I think that most people that have done sort of that approach, it didn't work for them. They, they weren't able to build an audience. They weren't able to become popular, but you were able to do that with, with, with at least, at least your persona. And I know people, at least some of the people attacking you, it's a fake public persona, blah, 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 whatever. I'm not, I'm not saying I'm not arguing with them or, or you yeah, or whatever. And also that's just, not why people tuned in. People don't tune you're, in to be you're, like, what a great guy. I can't wait to watch him play. You know what I mean? Like, but you're just go a ahead. good player who's at least persona is they're just, just at the table and they're just kind of a genuine, nice on, on the quiet side guy. I feel sure. like most of the people with sort of that persona typically were not able to build audiences up from just so playing. You, yeah. So I, I think a few things on that. I mean, there's no question. Like, there's a, a lot of people that have, have tried to replicate like the business model that I've ran over the past six years. You know, I, again, not a particularly romantic thing to say for people that just think nine guys get together and gamble it up, <laughs> you know? Um, but like, yeah, there are a lot of people that have tried to replicate my business model. My first guess is first mover advantage probably played a role for me. You know, the reality is, is before I started playing on streams, like there were very few of them and the audience was very small. Uh, I started playing, built a following on that stream, and then that stream kind of started to grow at a rather rapid rate. I think the other one, though, is is uh, the one I'm a lot more excited about, and I think we can agree on this. Like, it's about the poker. It, it's it is the reason why no one has done what I've done since is because it's really fucking hard. What do I mean by that? It's really fucking hard to play really great, exploitable live poker for a ton of money and do it well. Like. You just, you need to like have been one of the best at your craft for 20 years, you know, and I'm well past the time where like, I'm going to just be uh, like modest about that kind of thing. You know, I think that if you had uh, a whole bunch of other guys who were able to do that, I think you just would have seen more of it because 
otherwise like what what would it be what you know it's not like i'm just coming out there and they just go man i just can't wait to see garrett's face today i, I really think first and foremost it's about the poker it was probably from your long survivor run all those episodes you were on that's what it was yeah i just built such a big <laughs> following with my uh stellar play on that show that, like, yeah it, it just yeah. immediately translated to, to live the bike yeah maybe the stakes were too low over there i don't know i don't know that that was great that I, I did i did enjoy seeing you when you, when you went, that, went on that show i tried to get on they never they never never got yeah. back to by me. the way thanks for bringing that up that's <laughs> i had to i had to i had to work it in there yeah yeah uh, yeah no i i mean it's fine like i'll i'll be uh I should only assume every public appearance I ever make, they're going to bring it in. There I got, I got, I so mean, like, I just, I, I got to throw it in there. At least, uh, at least I didn't get the, like, why did you do this? Or what do you think you did wrong? So survivor question today. So thank you for that. <laughs> you, got, you know, it's a different time. Um, yeah. the, the last question here, it, it was kind of based around the last one too, but do you see yourself ever playing on hustler casino live again specifically? Yeah, I, I think we covered that one in terms of like, Probably not. I have no interest in playing there, supporting their stream for now. Uh, uh, you know, I, I think there's just no reason for me to just say no. <laughs> you know, I think probably not uh, taking like a bit of a Switzerland there, uh, you, you know, is fine. And I, I think that this is sort of like a, a reasonable time to, to maybe bring Nick and Ryan like back into this a little bit, you know, like. Nick is really, he's a really challenging person. Um, but we, we did have a friendship. We did have a lot of deep conversations. We did hang out outside the table for a time, several times. Uh, with Ryan, that's true times a hundred times. a hundred. And Ryan and I hung out for a period a lot. Uh, I was close with Ryan for a while. Uh, I, I care about Ryan. I've always cared about Ryan. Um, and man this 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 shit sucks you know uh it, it it hurts and it hurts that i have to say negative things about them like to to be able to speak my truth you know uh i really don't fault ryan for being a cutthroat and savvy businessman uh, i think it'd be hypocritical to 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 say that you know i think i have plenty of that in me but um you know shit happens uh and, and you know here we are and and because of that you know i don't i don't necessarily see like a, a path forward for for ryan and i to work together and that's that's sad you know because uh you know him and i talked about this a lot but you know when when we started working together in 2017 you know he's playing two two three or two five as a prop you know and, and trying to scavenge some games and, and now the the guy is what he is. I mean, it, it speaks for himself. Like the, the guy's, he's built an empire, you know, and, and I, I am genuinely happy for him that he's been able to do that. Oh, th those are kind words. All right, man. I think, I think we kind of hit everything. Any, any last things you wanted to bring up before we go? No, I feel like the less I say, the better. I'm, say something, put my foot in my mouth more and whatever. <laughs> this, this shit. Oh, oh, always, this shit right now. <laughs> always more opportunity to do so. Okay, guys. All right. Thank you, Garrett, for joining us. Adelstein is fine. I won't mess that up again, I promise. And uh, thank you for joining us. I, I think people are very excited to see you and they're looking forward to you playing poker in the future. Thanks, guys. All right. And uh, for me, guys, I will be playing my next Heads Up $100,000 challenge. Apparently, everyone wants a piece. I must suck. Uh, next, on Wednesday, I'm playing Scott Ball, $100,000 Heads Up No Limit. I will see you guys there. Peace.